All right, everyone. So, so far we talked about what algorithm analysis is and sort of the rough way we do it with this big O notation. Then I went into the mathematical definition of big O and talked about how it allows us to ignore some details that are going to be things like exactly how many instructions are in a loop or how many instructions we do outside of the loop and those sort of little details while still capturing the overall like order of the algorithm. Like, is it linear? Is it constant? Is it quadratic? Things like that. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at more examples where we just see an algorithm and then talk about how to do the analysis on it and come up with the big O for it. So let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, so we're going to begin by talking about this search algorithm, which is written in Java code. This method takes in the array that we're searching through and an item that we're searching for. When we run the algorithm, when we run the method, it's going to start by keeping track of the location that we found or didn't find the thing we're looking for. And it starts it off as negative one to mean, hey, we haven't found this thing yet. Then it goes through the entire array looping through. And if it ever finds it, if it ever sees that it's equal to the one it's looking for, then it keeps track of that index as the location variable and breaks out of the loop. And then at the end, it returns it either way. So either we return the negative one because we never found it, or if we ever enter this if statement, then we found the actual thing. And so we remember that index. So now let's start talking about algorithm analysis and how we would find the big O of a method like this. Well, there's sort of two major rules that you need to follow when analyzing algorithms. The first is that if you do one thing followed by another thing, followed by another thing like this, you add them together. So if you do something in sequence and then something else and then something else sort of as like discrete steps like this, then the time taken for this entire algorithm is the time that this part takes plus the time that this part takes plus the time that this part takes. And that might seem kind of obvious, but that's, that's the rule. You know, uh, if you have to do three things, obviously the time it takes to do all of them is the time it takes to do them individually add it together, right? So if we find the big O for this step and then the big O for this step and the big O for this step, we just have to add those three things together to get sort of the overall thing. And then we might need to simplify it like we're gonna talk about. So that's the first rule, sort of the adding rule. Then you have the loop rule, which is really super important, which is that if you have a loop in your algorithm, like we do right here, then what has to happen to analyze this loop is you find the big O of the interior part, the loop body, and then you have to times that by the number of iterations of the loop, which again is maybe obvious, but I think it's sort of clear, sort of helpful to spell that out. However much time the loop takes, we have to multiply that by how many times you repeat the loop. So those are the two major rules of algorithm analysis. First, you find the things that you do sequentially one after the other, and you add them together. And then you find loops and you multiply the loop interior by the number of iterations it takes. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. How much time does it take to do this here? Well, there's no looping or anything. It's just one discrete step. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say that that takes one step. And it doesn't really matter if it's one or three or four, you know, when we go through all the like compiling stuff that we talked about last time, but it's just some constant amount of time. We can say one, we're going to simplify it later anyway. Something else that we should talk about though, is what does the end mean here? That's always an important thing to be aware of when you're doing algorithm analysis. Algorithm analysis, again, is all about how the algorithm takes more and more time for bigger input sizes. And our input size is denoted by this N here. And so in this algorithm, what do you think the N is? Well, it's the thing that's gonna cause this to take more time as it increases. And that would be the size of the array. This array dot length here is essentially our n. The bigger array that we need to search through, the more time it's gonna take. So that's our n. So we figured out that one. Then we can go ahead and figure out this one. This is also some constant amount of time. I'll put plus one here. Again, it, the constant itself, as we talked about last time, we're gonna ignore anyway. Now, the key thing is this loop, of course. We need to figure out how much time it takes. And of course, it'll take more time than either of these other two steps we looked at. And to figure out how much time the loop takes, we need to do two things. We need to figure out how much time is taken by the body of the loop and then how much iterations the loop is going to do and multiply them together. 
So first of all, how much time does the interior of this loop take? Well, we have to do an if check. And then if it's true, we have to set a variable and then break out of the loop. We'll come back to this break statement in a sec. But it takes some constant amount of time, right, to do this. We're not like looping inside of the loop or anything. We're just doing an if check. And if it's true, doing a couple of extra steps. So that's going to be some constant amount of time. Again, it doesn't matter what constant we use. But let's say it's a constant, I don't know, of two. Then we have that, that's the interior of the loop, and then we need to multiply that by how many iterations there are going to be. And now this is an interesting question because we actually don't know at this point how many loop iterations there's going to be. We could loop through the entire array and visit every single cell in the array one by one and get to the end and still not have found the thing, in which case there's going to be n iterations. The size of the array is n and we have to go through the whole thing, so it takes n iterations. Or we could get lucky and have the thing we're looking for be in the very first cell, in cell zero of the array, and then we don't have to go through the loop hardly at all, just but once. And on average, maybe you'd say that we go through about half of the array before finding the thing we're looking for. And so there's sort of two things you can talk about with algorithm analysis. You can talk about sort of the worst case performance and be super pessimistic and think we'll never find the thing in the array. Or you can talk about average performance. Both are useful and are good things to talk about. In this case, though, it's actually not going to matter for the big O. Um, they'll actually both be the same. But let's go ahead and talk about average case performance, which is sort of, I think, the more common concern that you could have. On average, how is this thing going to do? And so let's say on average, we find the thing we're looking for about halfway through the array. That's sort of what you will expect when you're running the search algorithm, probably. And so it'll take about one half n iterations. Because if your array is size n, then you have to go halfway through it. Then it'll take about one half n iterations through this array. So now we can go ahead and simplify. We can say steps of n is equal to 2 plus n, right? Because we add these two things together. And then the 2 and the divided by 2 um, are going to cancel out. So we get 2 plus n. And then, of course, we ignore this constant that gets added on and just say this is big O of n. And this is why the break didn't actually matter if we're doing like worst case or average case. Because if I said this was the worst case performance, then we would have not had this half here. And so we would have said 2 plus 2n, but we'd simplify that to the same thing either way. And if you think about it, it makes sense. Because imagine that this interior of the loop took twice as much time as we expected it to. And instead of taking two instructions, it took four instructions. Well, that cancels out the fact that we sometimes will only go halfway through the array because of this sort of like ignoring the coefficient thing anyway. So it doesn't matter if we break halfway through the loop or all the way through the loop. It doesn't matter for the analysis. It's going to be big O of n either way. So that's sort of the full sort of like going through this in detail, how you can come to and arrive at the answer. As you get more experienced with algorithm analysis, you'll be able to look at a method like this and just say, well, OK, these things I know I can ignore because they're constants. But I need to look at the loop. Whenever you're doing algorithm analysis, the loops sort of like should dominate your attention and should be the things you focus on. And so we'll look at this loop. It goes on average halfway through the array, and we do a constant amount of work inside of it. And so you can kind of sort of quickly decide for yourself that it's big O of n. That's sort of the taking shortcuts approach to analysis that you'll be able to do once you have a little bit more experience looking at this kind of thing. All right, hopefully that example makes sense. Let's now turn to another one. Here's another method that also works on arrays. And this one checks to see if the array has any repeated elements, so any elements that appear more than one time in the array. This starts by making a Boolean to represent whether we found a repeated value or not. It sets it equal to false at the beginning, and then it returns it at the end. And these are going to be constant amounts of time, right? We do this step, and we do this step. But we're going to add that to whatever time the for loop takes. And I think we can agree just by looking at this that the for loop is going to take more time than either of these two statements. And so when you do algorithm analysis, remember that you ignore 
all but the biggest terms. And so in terms of n, these things are not going to be the biggest terms. So we don't even really need to look at these when doing the analysis. We only really need to worry about the loop, right? Again, n here is going to be the length of the array. However big the array is, is going to be what determines how long this method takes. So now we have, if you notice here, a nested loop. And that's how we're going to get these things that take more than n time. Because remember, we need to go ahead and our loop rule for doing algorithm analysis is that you times the number of iterations by the time it takes to do the loop. And so this outer loop here, how many iterations does it take? Well, it goes through the entire array. So that takes n time. Then we need to multiply that by the body of the loop, which is itself a loop. And so again, we have to do a multiplication here. We need to multiply the number of iterations this loop does by the body of the loop. Now this loop is interesting because it starts at i plus one. So this one doesn't go through the whole array. It goes through a portion of the array that is to the right of where we are in the first loop. So if we were to sort of look at the array, the first loop, the outer loop goes through all of the cells one by one. And at each step of that loop, like if we're in the first cell, then the second loop goes through the rest of the array that's remaining. Then if we get to here, let's say in our outer loop, then the inner loop goes through the rest of the array remaining. So we can say that on average, it goes through about half of the array. For the first few iterations of this inner loop, it goes through almost the entire array. But then for the last few iterations of the outer loop, the inner loop only goes through the small part of the array that's remaining. So this one on average is going to execute n divided by two times. Then we have to multiply in the body of that loop, how much time that takes. Luckily we bottom out and we don't have another loop nested inside of here. We just have this if check setting a variable if the check passes. And so that's gonna be some constant amount of time, right? It doesn't matter how big the array is, doing this check just once is gonna take the same amount of time, whatever it is. I'll just call it C for constant. And then we have to multiply these things together. And so what do we get? We get uh, constant divided by two, you know, multiplying this half and the constant, sort of forming them together, times by n squared. And again, we're going to ignore any constant coefficients. So it doesn't actually matter how much time this if check takes, just so long as it's some kind of constant. And so we get as the overall efficiency for this big O of n squared. So this scales even worse than linearly, by the way. If you remember from your algebra classes, this would be some kind of like parabola thing, where as n increases, the number of steps needed by the algorithm is some sort of parabola, which if you remember, looks like this kind of thing, where it starts going up and up and up more faster than linearly. And so, and so quadratic algorithms scale much more poorly than do linear algorithms. Whereas a linear algorithm, if it has, even if it has a straight slope, eventually it's gonna be better than the quadratic, which is gonna continue at a much, much steeper rate. All right, so that was a good one. Let's go ahead and look at another example. This one deals with calculating the pay for an employee where you know um, how many hours that they worked and you know their hourly rate, and we have to calculate their, their pay with overtime taken into account. So we start the amount off at zero. If they work less than 40 hours or equal to 40 hours, then their pay is just their hours they worked times their hourly rate, and we return that. Otherwise, if they worked more than 40 hours, then we give them their first 40 hours at their normal pay rate, and then the hours above 40 at 1.5 times their pay rate. So this is a sort of simple algorithm but let's go ahead and do the analysis on it. Now, the first thing to notice should be that there's no loops in here. If there's no loops or no recursion that causes a loop, which we'll talk about uh, next week, actually, recursion, if there's no looping behavior of any kind going on, though, it can't actually be any more than big O of one. Because if you look at it, everything else would only take a constant amount of time. It doesn't matter how big these values are, how many hours they have, or how big their rate is, there's no repeating statements. So whatever amount of time this code takes to run, is it, it's going to be a constant amount of time. And so whatever constant that is, remember if we talk about steps of n 
at being, it doesn't matter what number you pick, 17 or 23 or whatever, it's still going to be equal to the big O of just one. Big O of one means constant time. And the reason for that, going back to last video when we talked about the mathematical definition, is that we can find any sort of constant value to times by this to get above the original number, no matter what number it was. So every constant value is just big O of one, and this one falls into that category as well. All right, that was a quick one. Let's take a look at one more. All right, here's the last one we're gonna talk about. And this one's kind of a tricky one. So it might not look tricky though. Let's see what this is doing. This is a method called print list, which takes in a linked list of strings called names, and then it loops through that entire list and calls the get method on each index and prints out that string to the screen. Now at first blush, this might look like big O of N, right? Because we have the n being the length of the list, of course, that's the only sort of thing that could be big or small here. And we go through that entire thing one time, this loop goes through one time, and then we do a constant amount of work inside of the loop. And so it looks very much like big O of n. But I'm gonna tell you that it's actually not. And the reason why is because we are actually not doing a constant amount of work inside of this loop body. We are going through the loop n times, that part is right, but the amount of work that we're doing inside of this loop body is actually on the order of n as well. It's not a constant amount of work. And the reason because is because calling this get method on a linked list is not big O of one, it's big O of n. Linked list dot get of some index here, that's a big O of n operation in and of itself. The reason being, if you think about how linked lists work, you can't just jump directly into the middle of a linked list. You have to work your way, whether it's a doubly linked list or a singly linked list, you have to work your way through the entire list to get to any particular element. So we're going through the linked list once with this loop, but we're actually going through it again with this loop here. Excuse me, not with this loop, just with this method call, because inside of this method call is a loop which has to loop through the entirety of the linked list. So two lessons to take away from this example. So this, well first let me finish. This is actually then big O of n squared because we have to go through the list this one time first here and then we go through it another time in the fact that we're calling this get method which itself takes a linear amount of time. So again uh, I think there's two takeaways from this. One is that you have to think about what happens inside methods that are called. You can't just look at code or look at an algorithm and take it at face value. If you're calling methods, you have to think about what those methods are going to do. Are they going to take constant time? Are they going to have loops in them? You need to understand how those operations work in order to do the whole overall analysis. So that's the first takeaway. The second takeaway is something I've been harping on for this whole semester, which is that the data structures you use matter. The fact that we used a linked list here wasn't a really a great choice, or at least the way we implemented this method isn't a good decision based on the fact that we're using a linked list. If we had changed this to array list, but keep everything else the same, array list here, then this would become big O of n, because then the get method for an array list is constant time. With an array, you can jump directly to any of the indices without having to loop through anything. So that's one of the reasons that studying data structures is so, so important. Even if when you, you know, graduate and get a job, even if you mostly use data structures that are built into whatever language you're using, like you just use ArrayList and LinkList, it's still super duper important to understand them and know how they work because of lessons like this. You need to think about the things that you're using and how they perform. And at the end of this class, you'll be able to say, oh, a linked list has you know, it takes big O of n to loop through it and big O of n to access it, whereas an array list takes big O of one to access, but big O of n to add to the beginning. And so you'll have these sort of like understanding of how the different data structures within computer science work and how efficient they are for different things. So that's all for this week on algorithm analysis, but we're actually not done with this topic at all. From now on, whenever we talk about a new data structure or a new algorithm or how to do something, we're immediately going to, after we finish talking about how it works, we're going to put on our algorithm analysis hat and talk about the analysis for it. And so we'll see lots more examples of looking at algorithms and coming up with the big O for them and, and all of that kind of thing.
So that's all for this week, though. Thanks. Uh, this is a, sort of a difficult topic when you first see it. It's hard to sort of get used to this way of thinking. But as I said, as we get more and more experience throughout the semester, it'll become second nature. All right, thanks.